All right, all right, all right. So, got the bike here. My beautiful Speed Triple 1200 RS is dirty. There are some bugs everywhere. I don't know if you can see all that bee guts up in here. Oh man, you see my headlights? Oh, she's a dirty birdie. She's filthy. Um, a lot of bugs out there last time I went riding. So I need a washer, got my rag, got my soap, got my hose. Should be good. Now this isn't going to be like a full detail, this is just to kind of get most of the guts and get it a little clean. I'm going to run over to Cycle Gear. Usually I just get my tires from the shop, but I kind of want to go price out some tires from Cycle Gear. Uh, usually I go to our local shop. Artillery Power Sports. If you're in the Bakersfield area, that is the place to go. Scott is the man. He will do your bike right, get it going perfectly. He's done all the work on all my bikes. I've never taken it anywhere else. He's the best. Um, but if you can see, that's no bueno. No good on the tire. So, we need to get new ones. Not safe. Especially after my last ride, um, kind of pushing the speeds a little bit. Kind of had to push the speeds a little bit. But uh, let's give her a wash, huh? And head on over there. Usually when I'm in cycle gear, a lot of times I like to go there without wanting to buy anything or have anything in mind because I usually browse and find something that I want to buy. I mean, it's motorcycle stuff. Who doesn't want to buy motorcycle stuff? But this time we're going to go price out some tires. We'll see if I walk out of there with anything. I might, I might not. I usually do. So, let's give her a wash. Such so great content, right? A guy here watching his bike. And if I had my girl out here doing it, more people might want to watch it, but they stuck with watching me do it. All right, let's so go. Now I'm just using dish soap to wash my bike. Um, there's a lot better things that you can use to wash your bike. However, I don't have anything right now. There's a detail shop that sells detail supplies around the corner that I'm going to go by and check out. It's just, they're never open on my days off. So, problem is without being open on your days off if you can't shop there. But I'll make a trip one of these days to go check it out. Sure they're gonna have everything that I need to wash my bike over there. I saw this bike um, at the gym the other day when I was leaving. It's a new R3. And the guy had greased and shined the side walls of his tires and i was trying to find the guy so i can give him a little warning about that but uh you know you grease and shine the side walls of your tires they're gonna be slippery <sighs> probably wash out the front tire if not the rear for sure and low side you know if you see me on a random day my bike's not going to be spotless my bike's going to have some grime on it it's going to have some dead bugs Reason being, I ride my bike. I ride my bike a lot. Um, I should wash it more than I do. I do take care of it, but chances are, with my work schedule and with how much I ride my bike, um, I might see a little bit of grime on it. But she needed a good cleaning today. There were a lot of bugs out there on Elk Kills the other day. And uh, I literally worked all day yesterday. For what, about 10, 11 hours, so maybe more actually. I think I worked 12 hours, 9.30 to 9.30, yeah, 12 hours. So there's no chance of washing the bike yesterday. Or really even riding, except for riding to work. Oh yeah, so sexy, all soapy. Oh yeah, baby. I definitely want to take this off. I don't like any of the tail tatties that they have. They kind of stick down right here. I really just want nothing. Um, I want to know if it's possible just to take this off and put the wiring back in there. <sighs> or 
or maybe and just use like plumber's tape down here to put the plate on if I even run a plate maybe just don't run a plate at all you know the plate's good for when you're in traffic you know what I mean like you're not going anywhere you're just commuting to work you're obeying the rules of the road but when you're, when you're out riding the canyon it's kind of kind of bad it kind of snitches you out Oh yeah, I think So I have the cowl to put on here, the rear seat cover. I just haven't done it yet because, you know, I don't want to have to change it out every time I want to take my girl for a ride. I would like to start running it more often, but I plan on taking her for a ride sooner than later. Plus it's not on there and I have to swap it on to put it on. It discourages her from wanting to take this bike. So, just leave the seat on there. So I'm gonna go look at some tires. I wanna see what the price is on the Super Forces. See what they're doing for Dunlops and see what they're doing, uh, maybe the Michelin GPs. Um, I never ran the Michelin before. One of my friends told me that it's really good, especially for a front tire. It provides a lot of grip. So I'm gonna check it out. Uh, I'm really leaning on the Dunlop Q3 Plus, maybe the Dunlop 4, at least for the rear tire. Um, I really liked it on my R6. So, but we'll see. I just want to see what they have at Cycle Gear as far as their prices go. Um, most likely, I might not even buy it from them. Uh, like I said, Scott over at Artillery, he does good deals on tires, but if they have some insane deal going on at Cycle Gear, you know, I'll just get it from there and let Scott put it on for me. All right. Oh, Trixie's clean. She's a clean girl. She was a dirty girl, but now she's clean. She's still dirty though. My dirty little Betsy. My dirty little Trixie. Do you guys name your bikes? If so, what's the name of your bike? What did you name your bike? What kind of bike is it and what did you name it? This is my Triumph. I named her Trixie. She's a little, little dirty girl. She's a hewer, you know, my little hewer. She likes to be ridden hard. She gets wet. And thank you for uh, doing the yard right now while I'm trying to make a video. You know, I appreciate that. You know, it's hard enough out here to get these videos. And then you got some guy out here leaf blowing no freaking leaves so yeah thank you sir all right guys i'm gonna get her dried off and get my helmet so that i can head on over to cycle gear all right guys view change all right we're back uh, cycle gear is not far from my house so I'm going to leave my garage door open and I will be back shortly <laughs> alright now that I've let the bike sit and warm up let's it go just wash it right in through the dirt real nice real smart Let's go this way. Oh, what's this? Got some balloons over here. Guess I didn't drive the bike off completely properly because it says responsibility on those balloons. Because I can feel some water hitting me, but that's quite all right. It's a little warm today. It was warm yesterday. <laughs> Warmer today. Take a chill because that back tire is on its last thread. Um, definitely going to be riding a bike when you can see the metal in the tires uh also i don't know if people know this but your tires have wear bars 
they are in the tread patterns on your tires. When you start seeing those bars, that means your tire's pretty much done. You know, depending on how you ride, most sport bike tires probably only last you about 3,000 miles. You might get lucky and find one that'll last you four to 5,000 miles, but again, that just depends on how you ride. If you ride pretty hard, you're gonna be between the 25 to 3,000, and even some 25 is lucky. Like, if you're on a Super Corsa, you're gonna be about 22, 25. So just know, depending on how frequently you ride, you're gonna be buying tires about once every other month, maybe three months. This, these tires have been on here for, uh, bought the bike in November. So it's been five months, but out of that five months, spent a month in the shop and then spent a little bit of time in the garage um, due to the winter. And, but now that it's riding season, they'll be going through a lot quicker and it's a little bit warmer replace my rear I don't always replace my front there's people out there that swear up and down that if you replace your rear tire you have to replace your front tire um, with a matching set now there are so many different tire options to run that it's entirely up to you just make sure your front tire is good if I get a deal I'll probably replace both tires if not I'm just gonna replace the rear tire I do kind of want to replace the front tire because I do notice with the Metzlers or however you say it, whatever they're called there is a little bit of slippage um, when you're pushing it and you're going through a corner and you're on the side not much but there's a little bit so I want to maybe get something a little bit more sticky my last bike I was running super courses in the front and done my Q3 pluses in the back and that was a pretty good combination for me you know it depends on your riding style and stuff too some people like to go hot into the corner and slow out of the corner some people go slow into the corner fast out of the corner um, there's just different riding styles different ways so you know Whatever I buy might not be right for you. Kind of experiment with your tires. Alright. Bike parking right in front. <sighs> Let's see what these guys got. What's up, man? How you doing? How's the, everything's going? I need to price some tires. Just want to see. I heard some good things about the Michelin, so, but the front tire. My buddy was running the Michelins on the front. He liked it a lot. Yeah, I was doing the Q3 Plus on for my rear tire for a while mm -hmm. on the R6, and I really liked that. Pirellis. Yeah, the, the GTs are pretty good. They're gonna last you a while. The GPs, yeah. I was seeing some reviews. People are getting up to about 5,000 miles on them. Yeah. I'm used to replacing them about after 3,000 miles. Yeah, they look like they look, shit, look at all that tread on there, man, Jesus. Yeah, these powers, my friend, tell me they're pretty good. It's not a bad price for 190 Yeah. How are they after the first heat cycle? I think this is what my friend, no, is this I what I haven't used them. I don't have a sport bike, so. Yeah, that's true. I mean, all I know is what DeAndre told me, and then the Pilot Road 5s are on, like, clearance right now. How much, uh, these right here, they're... 236? Yeah, for the 190.50, yeah. Oh, 55, all it is is a shorter sidewall. Yeah, I know. I kind of like the the taller. T it don't matter, though. Yeah, it don't matter. What's the difference? I need to get a suit and some different riding boots. These are nice. Oh, these look nice and breezy. Oh, yeah. This is what I got now. But I did not pay 150 bucks for them. Oh yeah. So what do I want my next helmet to be? Eight hundred dollars though. It's freaking nice. Probably so quiet. Have a good day, gentlemen. KTM Duke.
How you doing, sir? Good looking bike. You too, man. Thank you. The 690s are nice. It's an 890. It's an 890? Phew. Oh, man. I thought the 890s were a little bit bigger. It looks like a it looks like a good size. It started out, it was like a 690, and then it was a 790 for about five years. Yeah. The 690s, like the Supermotos. Uh, my um, my boss's brother-in-law has some, and they're beautiful bikes. But uh, this is I've never seen one in person. It looks really good. I like the size of it. Uh, so like I'm. My whole life I've been riding bigger motorcycles and, and as I've gotten older and wanted to get something lighter. Yes. Like yeah, it's, I didn't I didn't realize. Yeah, exactly. I didn't realize how I mean I'm not saying small like it's a small bike, but it seems small. but like compared to the, the twelve hundred it, it looks size wise. Yes, sir. Did you put that TTX or did it come like Came that? stock. Wow. Yeah. Got some high end shit there, man. Yes. I got a good deal on it. But um, Downtown? no, because Fred Cummings is horrible. <laughs> Do you like shopping there? No. Yeah, I don't think any real motorcycle enthusiast does. It's kind of strange. Yeah, uh, they have hor so I went in there twice, so uh, three times. So I went in there to look at a bike because I was uh, dealing with insurance and I was waiting for the check. So as soon as the check came in, I wanted to be ready to purchase. Yeah. And so I will go in there. And I'm looking at, there's a couple of 2 they had in their use, and I was kind of thinking about that. And then I saw this on the showroom floor, and when the tra the teaser trailers came out, I was like, damn, that's a dream bike to me. Like, I, I never liked this, the Speed Triples, but the 1050s, but when they dropped this one, I was like, oh, that's exactly what I want in a naked bike, you know? And so, I went the second time with my girl to show her the 2 I was looking at. And she's like... And I was like, but hey, let me show you this bike. Look how beautiful it is. She's like, just get it. It's the bike you want. And she's like, just make some payments on it. And I was like, yeah, but I don't really want to make payments. That's what she's like, dude, just buy the bike you want. And I was like, okay, babe. <laughs> and so, That's right. We've been together for 10 years. It's basically my wife. So, um, so I go to talk to the guy about it. And I'm like, yeah, so when I get the check, I'm going to come back in. He's like, yeah, whenever you're serious, come back. So I came back in with the check. And I go to talk to the dude. And he's like... Well, you know, you know, yeah, like we got some bikes, but he just blew me off. And I was like, okay. So I was like, you know what? We got Monday off. Let's go down to, or uh, Tuesday off because all shops are closed on Monday. So we got Tuesday coming up off. I was like, let's go down to LA and see what they got. I was like, let's go to the BMW down there because I wanted one of the S1000 single R's. And so I go down there and they're like, yeah, we can't get you into a bike for a couple months right now, but we can get you one. I was like, okay, cool. And so I was kind of looking around a little bit, and I called SoCal Triumph, because I saw this listed. It, ha it was listed with 350 miles. And I was like, dude, I don't want a demo bike. And so I call him, and uh, he's like, email me your information. I email He calls me back. He's like, dude, this bike is brand new. There's no miles on it. He's like, I just have it listed as uh, 350 miles so that Triumph doesn't freak out. You know about the price being so low because it was uh, like six grand off what people were asking for and so I told him sold man so I didn't even go into the dealership I just said I'll be down there in two weeks to pick up the bike with the cash he said we'll hold it for you mm -hmm. so it was made it real simple so these guys out here are a joke Move it. Yeah. Good. Good yeah. You. Good yeah. yeah so you know it's been I've had a few issues here and there the quick shifter wasn't working but everything seems to be resolved now you know first generation kind of happens but 2022 yeah, I just shredded through my tires, so I came here to price tires, but they don't have the size that I need, so I'll probably just go to, I'll just go to Scott at Artillery, have him yeah, put it on the, Scott, yeah, no, he's a great guy, as long as you're dialed, that's all that matters to him, he doesn't care, as long as you get the best deal and you're dialed, that's what's important, I've, I've taken my bike to him to have him do work on it, and like to get the valves adjusted on my R6, and he was like, he called me back. He's like, dude, these things are pretty much in, in spec. Like, I can change them, but it probably won't make any difference. And he's like, so, like, if you want to just come pick up your bike, you know, like, just charge me to, to basically the hour worth of labor. And you know, most people would have done the job and charged you the 600 bucks, you know what I mean? Like, but he's like, nah, dude, you're dialed. So he's the only guy I go to. He, and uh, he's, he's gotten me in there on some emergency services and taken care of me real fast. So Scott's the man. I tell everybody, if you're in, in the Kern County area, Scott's the guy to go. I do like it. I like the color on it. It looks beautiful. I have an acrophobic coming for it. 
Yeah, I was. I've been waiting to put an exhaust on this, but uh, yeah, I'm mean, a full race fit on this. I was looking; it's only about uh, I think 500 uh, where, where, euro. If you do that, where will you get a tune? I'm all new to this. Uh huh. I've been like a Harley guy forever. Yeah. It's just like it's a whole new universe that I'm obsessing over. Yes, sir. And, and I, I'm familiar with Power Commanders, and Power Visions, and stuff. So they have one of those, but. The, they don't have a tune for it. And there's this guy in Costa Mesa has a company called Rottweiler, and he does a lot of adventure stuff, a lot of KTM stuff. And uh, he's got a lot of tunes for him, but he doesn't have one for the 890 yet. There's no application. I'm sure they'll get one. I'm sure what I'm going to do, there's this people called Cooper. There's also this thing called Open Flash. You take your ECU and send it to this guy in the Bay Area, and then he does whatever it is he does and sends it back to you. See, and I've heard that with the f with the exhaust, sometimes you don't necessarily need to do it, or if you just closed loop, if you if you put an exhaust on it, it, it it'll get running too lean. It'll try to correct, but it's not. Yeah, um. That's just really a beautiful motorcycle. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I I really do. Suspension and like all these, like I I was just marveling over Scott's Triumph, like like these bolts here and stuff. It's just really. The craftsmanship that and see and that's what I like about Triumph. This is my first Triumph, but that's what I like about it is um they don't go flashy on the colors, but they dial everything in and they make it's you know it's almost like a I consider it like a gentleman's bike kind of like um it's not flashy so to like the random person it might not be flashy but to people who know motorcycles they see the stuff on the bike and they're like oh yeah yeah like that TTX wow yeah. No, yeah, and I mean, yeah, yeah, this bike, that's what I was, so, I have so much road feel on this bike, like, when I'm in a corner, I can feel, like, everything, it's so smooth, like, good talking to you, sir, right. yep, be safe. Hi, how you doing? <sighs> I can talk to people about motorcycles all day. All day long. The guy said he was a Harley guy and now he's riding the KTM. It's pretty sick. You know, I was uh <laughs> I wasn't into sport bikes or naked bikes. I was into cruisers as well. That's why you know the other bike you see in the garage is my Yamaha Bolt. So that's what I was used to. That's just what I liked. A lot of guys in town kind of ruined uh sport bikes for me. Um you see a lot of just janky sport bikes. A lot of the guys kind of just ruined sport bikes here in town for me. Uh, there wasn't anything cool about them. They were just beat up bikes. And I just wasn't into them. Like they just weren't cool. And then I started seeing some videos online of people riding sport bikes and especially through the canyons. And I was like, oh, now I get it. That's what it's all about. You know, it's riding through a canyon carving the corners feeling the rhythm of the road like that's that's it for me like i i love it I, don't get me wrong i still 100 percent love cruising around town on my cruiser i love taking my girl out i love trying to see if i can learn how to do wheelies on them like don't get me wrong yeah i i really love that i love all aspects of riding but I just really found watching online that, you know, riding the canyons is really where it's at for me. Buying used sport bikes from private party was a chore. So when I was looking for my first sport bike, I would go and I'd read in the advertisement, whether it be on Craigslist or OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace, wherever it was, you know, great bike, this, that, the other, nothing wrong with the bike, perfect condition. You know, they show beautiful pictures of the bike, and then I'd show up and see the bike, and the bike was far from what was advertised. Far from what was advertised. They would be tore up, uh, the fairings would be just destroyed, so, uh, it was just all bad. And um, I even went to look at a bike, and they are advertising a brand new 6000, it's a 636, and I, when I got there, there was spray paint on the forks, the bike was rattle can um he's like well you know there's no title on the bike it's uh 
it was stolen it just got recovered so I'm waiting for insurance and this and that and I was like dude like and, and before I even got on the bike I, I went and test rode I got down the street and there was no brakes on the bike I was like dude why would you let me get on the bike like that it was crazy <sighs> anyway so finally found some a good bike the first R6 I bought was garbage luckily I was able to sell it I didn't take a loss actually got a gain on it um, and then which I don't feel bad about selling it to the guy because when he test rode it it broke down so the guy had full disclosure on the bike what was going on it's not like I told him that it was the best bike in the world so he had full disclosure on what was going on with the bike also um, I got a different R6 and I loved that bike until I wrecked it and it was great but uh, I'm home so I need what do you guys what tire do you guys think I should get uh, comment down below what you like what your tire setups are what you prefer let me know what you think and uh, just like comment and subscribe we'll see you guys on the next one peace